a small collection of dramatic comedies about middle-aged women who throw aside convention and decide to live a little, including two women who decide to chase two escorts in a bar and a mother who visits a strip club to spice up her marriage. Rankings are based on actual ratings among regular IMDb users. Number 10. The Lifeguard 29-year-old Lee is on leave from her job in New York City after feeling a sense of emptiness and sadness in her life. She gets to work as a lifeguard and starts a dangerous relationship with a troubled teenager, little Jason. What starts as an idea becomes a full-fledged affair. Lee and little Jason's steamy romance is ending abruptly, realizing some of those events are not what they're meant to be. Number 9. Afternoon Delight Rachel is a mother living in an unhappy life, frustrated by the roles of being a stay-at-home mom and not making love with her husband Jeff for months. She visits her therapist Lenore, but is unable to find any help in her advice. Rachel visits a strip club to spice up her marriage and meets McKenna, a stripper she adopts as her live-in nanny. Number 8. Sisters The film centers on adult sisters Kate, an irresponsible single mom, and Maura, a kind-hearted nurse and recent divorcee, who are summoned back to their childhood home by their parents to clean out their bedroom before the house gets sold. Upset and angry that all their childhood memories are going to be gone, Kate convinces Maura to have one last wild party at the house, which turns into the cathartic rager that a bunch of ground-down adults really need. Number 7. Bad Moms Amy, played by Mila Kunis, has a great husband, overachieving children, beautiful home, and a successful career. Unfortunately, she's also overworked, exhausted, and ready to snap. She joins forces with two other overstressed moms on a quest to liberate themselves from conventional responsibilities. Going on a wild, unmom like binge for a jolt of long overdue freedom, fun, and comedic self indulgence. Number 6. Strictly Sexual. Two successful women, sick and tired of dating and relationships, decide to chase two escorts in a bar for a one night stand. Meanwhile, the construction workers and best friends, Stanny and Joe, come from New York but can't find jobs in Los Angeles. The women offer to have the men stay in their swimming pool cabana, furnishing them with beer and food. In return, they would be their boy toys during the nights in a strictly sexual relationship. During the ensuing months, the couples become closer and change their feelings and behaviors with the development and growing of their relationships as the couples begin to develop romantic feelings. Number 5. Hello, my name is Doris. Doris Miller is a shy, eccentric 60-something woman living alone following the death of her mother, with whom she has lived with her whole life. On her way to work in Manhattan, where she has been doing data entry for decades, she meets a young co-worker, John, with whom she is immediately infatuated with. Empowered by self-improvement tapes, Doris decides to pursue a romantic relationship with him. She later discovers that he has a girlfriend. Number 4. Saving Grace The film tells the story of a middle-aged widow whose irresponsible husband left her in an enormous debt, forcing her to grow cannabis in her greenhouse along with her gardener Matthew to avoid losing her house. Even if her new production is exceptional, it must be sold. To improvise a dealer is not easy. Grace will therefore have to shake up some habits in her village, as in the middle of London. Following Saving Grace's release, two television film prequels to the film were produced along with a highly successful TV spin-off series called Dr. Martin, starring Michael Clunes in his role as Dr. Martin Ellingham in a name switch after appearing in the film as Bamford. Number 3. Calendar Girls 
based on the true story of a group of middle-aged Yorkshire women who produced a nude calendar to raise money for leukemia research under the auspices of the Women's Institutes in April 1999 after the cancer death of the husband of one of their members. The picture was awarded the British Comedy Award for Best Comedy and spawned four nominations for Helen Mirren and Julie Walters, respectively. Number 2. Miss Henderson Presents It tells the true story of Laura Henderson, an eccentric British socialite who opened the Windmill Theatre in London in 1931 and persuades impresario Vivian Van Damme to run it, despite the fact the two don't seem to get along at all. Although their idea of a non-stop revenue is at first a success, other theaters copy it and disaster looms. Miss Henderson suggests they add female nudity similar to Moulin Rouge in Paris, something unprecedented in the United Kingdom. The Lord Chamberlain, Roland Baring's second Earl of Cromer, reluctantly allows this under the condition that the nude performers remain immobile, so the performance can be considered art, the equivalent of nude statues in a museum. The film received two nominations at the 78th Academy Awards, Best Actress for Dench and Best Costume Design for Sandy Powell. The film won four minor awards and was nominated for 26, among them four BAFTA awards. Number 1. Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day Set in London just prior to World War II, a middle-aged London governess, Guinevere Pettigrew, has just been fired from her fourth job. An attempt to gain new employment catapults her into the glamorous world of dizzying social whirl of an American actress and singer, Delijah LaFosse. Unaware that flamboyant American singer-actress wants a social secretary rather than a governess, Miss Pettigrew quickly discovers that the younger woman is involved with three men, one of whom is in a position to cast her in the lead role of a West End play. As she tries to help Delijah sort through her various affairs, Miss Pettigrew is swept up into the world of high society. The screenplay by David McGee and Simon Befoy is based on the 1938 novel of the same name by Winifred Watson, 